most compelling action is on CBS Sports. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Welcome to our New York studios, Madness Central, throughout the tournament, where today we begin to narrow the list for Indianapolis, site of this year's Final Four, and we will have it all, 64 teams, 63 games, March Madness from tip to trophy, right here on the exclusive home of the NCAA tournament here at CBS Sports. First up today, the East Region matchup between the 12th seeded, always dangerous, Princeton Tigers, and the 5th seeded California Golden Bears, tipping off at 12-15. The man who leads the Tigers' charge is 6 4 senior guard Sidney Johnson, the first three-time captain in Princeton's history, and this year's Ivy League Player of the Year. There he is. Meantime, the Bears are led by a duck, 6'2 senior guard Randy Duck, that is, who will have to pick up his scoring to make up for the injured Ed Gray, the Golden Bears' leading scorer. Then, at 12.25, we'll bring some of you down to Memphis to see the Southeast first-round game that hits the SWAC champions, Jackson State Tigers, in their first-ever NCAA tournament trip against the top-seeded Jayhawks of Kansas. Trent Pulliam, a 6'8 junior, leads the Tigers in scoring and rebounding, and he's shown he can play any position on the floor. The Jayhawks juggernaut is junior Ray Prefrentz, the team's leading scorer and rebounder, and the Big 12 Conference Player of the Year. Then, for some of you, at 12.30, it's a cat and dog fight as the Butler Bulldogs take on the third seed Cincinnati Bearcats in their Midwest first round matchup. And as always here in our New York studios, I'm joined by my colleague throughout all of this, uh, 1982's Big Ten Player of the Year from Ohio State, my man Clark Kellogg. Clark, nice to see you again. We call it March Madness. It's March Mayhem this year. I love March Mayhem, and I'm excited about being right in the middle of it. Let's get the action going. Let's throw it up and play some basketball. You're, you're seeing some great games early, too. Oh, I think so. Intriguing matchups, especially when you discount the eight, nine matchups and one, two seeds. A lot of intriguing matchups through the rest of the tournament. Ready to throw the ball up. Coming up in our second set of games this afternoon, most of you will see the East first round matchup between the Long Island University Blackbirds featuring Charles Jones, the nation's leading scorer, and the fourth seed Villanova Wildcats. And then our prime Prime time lineup start, starting at 7.30 Eastern features Dean Smith's shot to tie the legendary Adolph Rupp's all-time record of 876 career victories when the top-seeded ACC champion North Carolina Tar Heels take on the Fairfield Stags. Many of you will see the West first-round game between top-seeded Kentucky and Montana tip-off at approximately 7.55. And then our second set of evening games is highlighted by the matchup between Colorado and Indiana as the Buffaloes try to run roughshod over Bob Knight's Hoosiers in that East region matchup. And Clark, uh, what are the keys to a day like this? Today? Well, certainly when you talk about some of the matchups, one of the keys is to come out aggressive and poised. I think when you look across the country, a lot of young teams, so poised and being ready to go after is going to be key. All right, we'll try to stay poised here as the road to the Final Four continues in a moment. Our primetime coverage beginning at 7.30 Eastern features Dean Smith's quest to tie Adolph Rupp's all-time record of 876 career victories. The Tar Heels are the ACC champions and the top seed in the East, but as the coach told us, he had to turn the team around to point it in the right direction. We were very young. I didn't really think we'd be good. I hope we would improve through the course of the year. But we started out decently winning in December, but not playing real well. And I was in the midst of changing defensively because I saw we couldn't play the way North Carolina teams always had up through from 62 to 94, a pressure defense. And uh, in doing so, maybe we took a step back, but we were playing against good teams, too. He made the adjustments as team won, and now he handles the approaching record as he does everything else with class. It's a compliment to all of our other players who played and it's their record, but still, my job is to concentrate on this year's team and anything that detracts from this year's team, I'm not doing my job, no being fair to this team. All the hoopla about the Adolf Rupp thing, and he's got his eye on this prize. Always been that way, hasn't he? He certainly has. But when you think about Dean Smith, obviously you think about great players in the tradition and history of North Carolina players, but also you think about class, consistency, ingenuity, and flexibility throughout his tenure as evidenced by what he was able to do with that young team this year. 61 tournament victories. John Wooden only, only had, had 47. Compared to that, it's an only, but he's graduated 97% of his lettermen. He's done it the right way with great success for a long, long time. 
All right, don't forget, for all you computer-friendly fans out there, you can travel the road to the Final Four in cyberspace by checking out CBS Sports Online. You'll find breaking news scores, highlights, everything you want and need to know about the tournament at cbs.sportsline.com. <laughs> road to the Final Four continues after a word from your local station. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, and welcome to CBS Sports' exclusive tip the trophy coverage of the NCAA tournament, where today we begin the journey on the road to Indianapolis, site of this year's Final Four. I'm joined here in Madness Central by former Ohio State star Clark Kellogg. And Clark, they've been playing this tournament since 1939. We weren't there for, for that <laughs> one, but there seems to be a lot more conversation about this one. Well, obviously, the Dean Smith story is huge, but also a lot of lower-seeded teams, Pat, feel like they have a chance to win some early games. All right, we start uh, the day in the East region with the matchup between those giant killers of tournaments past, the Princeton Tigers, against the fifth seed at California Golden Bears. Some of you will see the Southeast region game between the Jackson State Tigers and the top seeded Kansas Jayhawks, while others will see the Dogs and Cats go at it in the Midwest as the Butler Bulldogs take on the third seeded Cincinnati Bearcats in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Then at 2.37 Eastern, most of you will see the Long Island University Blackbirds, the Northeast Conference champions, take on the Villanova Wildcats and their freshman phenom, Tim Thomas, in a first-round East region clash. And our primetime coverage, beginning at 7.30, will feature Dean Smith going for his 876th career victory to tie Adolph Rupp's all-time record as the top-seeded North Carolina Tar Heels take on Fairfield in the East region. Coming up, we'll send you out to Winston-Salem for the East region game between Princeton and California. For those of you expecting to see Jackson State against Kansas, you'll see that tip at 1225. And for our Butler against Cincinnati audience, we'll be sending you to Auburn Hills for that game at 1230 as we begin. Here we go again. The road to the Final Four is sure to be a wild ride. Enjoy the games. We'll see you all day here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, Budweiser, Kemper Funds, and by Hertz. begins in Winston-Salem, North Carolina with first round action in the East region as the number 12 seed Princeton, the champions of the Ivy League, take on the California Golden Bears, the number five seed. This is the first of four games to be played here today. Later this afternoon, it's Villanova against LIU. Tonight, North Carolina and Fairfield, Indiana and Colorado. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonald along with Bill Raftery. Great to have you with us as the madness finally begins. And Bill, every year we talk about Princeton as the team nobody wants to see in their draw. Last year, they finally justified that reputation with the win over UCLA. This year, a different coach, the same style. Great time of year, but you get nervous when you see Princeton. The great style outside the deep shooting. Sidney Johnson, last three games, about 67% from deep. They're going to him, three-time captain, extraordinary performer. He's the Ivy League player of the year, despite averaging just nine points per game. Meanwhile, Cal, 21 and eight. They won two of their last three games, despite the fact that Ed Gray, their leading scorer, went down with a broken foot. Others have filled the void very nicely. Oh, they miss him. He's a great talent. But Tony Gonzalez fills that void now. He's making the deep shot, 15 foot and in, putting it on the floor. Great offensive rebounder. You can see his improved play with Gray out. Bill Carmody, 24 and three in taking over for Pete Carrill. After 14 years as an assistant coach at Princeton, his starting lineup is Gabe Luellis, Johnson, Steve Goodrich, Mitch Henderson, and Brian Earle. Meanwhile, Ben Braun is in his first year as head coach at Cal, and he was the Pac-10 Coach of the Year. He's 42 years old already in his 20th season as a head coach. He has Al Grigsby with Tony Gonzalez, Michael Stewart, or Andy Duck, 
and Pennis Magruder in the starting lineup. Cal in white controlled the tip as you might expect with their size advantage. And Princeton, unfortunately, is not man to man, a little bit of his own out there. A power team against a finesse team. And already they deprive you of your trademark slogan. Harmony's killing me. They go into Grigsby and he shoots an air ball. Knocked out of bounds, last touched by Mitch Henderson of Princeton. Bill Gracie, Art McDonald, and Jerry Petro, the trio of officials, working the ball game. They're going to force them to make the outside shot without Grace. Sometimes a dilemma. It's usually Duck that provides the lift from deep. Magruder, not much of a shooter. And they play off him. Duck is a shooter. And didn't get a shot up in time. Shot clock violation. And Princeton, the nation's stingiest defense, shows that defensive tenacity in the first possession. A duck has got to let it fly quickly. <laughs> You've got to get some good opportunities. You can't have empty trips against Princeton. Stifle you defensively. Run the clock here, spread the floor. Part of the reason Princeton leads the nation in scoring defense is that they hold the ball so long on offense, their opponents don't have much time to score. Strong drive to the bucket by Gabe Luellis, and he was fouled by Michael Stewart. First foul of the game on Stewart, and Luellis will shoot two. A little bit of a wrinkle, too, now. A lot more dribbling. A permissive attack by Bill Carmey. Let's them do some things, push the ball up the floor a little bit. Will forever live in fame, I guess, huh? He was... The player who scored the game-winning basket in the clip you just saw in the first-round victory over UCLA last year in the NCAA tournament in Indianapolis. Well, he's got more than 15 seconds of fame then, huh? Mm -hmm. A lifetime. A little full-court pressure, a wrinkle. Bill Carmody thought he might provide. They won't gamble. Just try and change the look and then protect the basket if possible. Gonzalez right to the bucket. Bodies fly. The shot wouldn't drop. The loose ball got tipped to Sidney Johnson. Well, they got what they wanted out of it. A rush, a quick hit, and now they make you be patient. Back cut, nice look. Trademark Princeton basketball, but Johnson couldn't control the pass from Henderson. And that's their pet play. Step back, give you the look. And a three-point try missed by Brian Earl. One-nothing Princeton, a minute and a half into the game. Three-point try, and it wouldn't drop for Duck. Foul on the rebound action, and that's two quick fouls on Stewart. He is foul-prone because he's a prolific shot blocker. Ordinarily, he picks up his fouls while trying to swat shots away. Tigers, the champions of the Ivy League from Princeton, New Jersey, located approximately midway between Philadelphia and New York City. And one and two this year against teams in the tournament. Their victory was against Marquette. They lost to Indiana and North Carolina. Two teams will play tonight in this building. You saw Stewart has gone to the bench with two fouls, replaced by Sean Marks. From the corner, the three-pointer for Gabe Luellis. They punish him with the dribble on occasion and kick out. Everybody on the perimeter can drill it, Sean. Particularly Luellis, he leads the team in threes with 65. Marks the replacement for Stewart with the first Cal bucket more than two minutes in. And we remind you that many of you will be heading to Memphis for the tip of the game between Jackson State and Kansas. It's Henderson with the blow by. Oh, a little exhaust on that one. They are reminiscent of Penn State. The shoes, the socks, with the football team, they look slow. They can blow by people. Very athletic team. Particularly Henderson, he's considered to be their best. Athlete. There's the dunk, the lob to Duck. Off the fine feed from Magruder, Duck at 6-2. Got up there for the finish. That's the cow version of a duck in. <laughs> and, uh, posted up in the lane, he was elevated. Winston was not ready for the quack attack. <laughs> Earl. Rejected by Grigsby. Marks was also in the neighborhood, and Princeton will play it in with 18 on the shot clock. The Tigers lead 6-4. to four. Sean, Princeton gets you up about the foul line. It gives plenty of room to drive to the basket or back cut. If you deny, they back cut. If you lay back, they shoot the three. 
Steve Goodrich is the center, but he can also play a long way from the bucket. He was wide open on a cut, but Johnson didn't see him. Good defensive pressure on the ball. Shot clock at seven and a holding foul called underneath on Tony Gonzalez of Cal. He hopes not to be called for holding on the basketball court or on the football field, where he's a star tight end for the Cal Bears. And as a matter of fact, he's announced he's leaving a year early to enter the NFL draft. Henderson missed the short one off the inbound pass from Johnson. Not a bad look, Chris Gonzalez hears the whistle. He's always looking for a flag. Out of line here in New York. We'll keep an eye on this game for you. Six to four early in the first half in that East region game. We're going to send you down to the Southeast region first round action between Jackson State and Kansas. Kansas, some say this is their year to win it all. We'll find out on their road begins. We'll go down to Tim Ryan. Thanks, Pat. From the pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, it'll be the number 16 seeds, the Tigers of Jackson State, against the top-ranked team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks at 32-1, and and their target is clearly a national championship. Next up here will be Purdue and Rhode Island. That should be a dandy. Number eight against number nine. And then this evening, Maryland and College of Charleston, followed by Arizona and South Alabama, all from Memphis. Hi, everyone. Tim Ryan with Al McGuire here at the Pyramid in Memphis. And Kansas comes in here having been ranked number one at the end of the season. Al, for the first time in their history, they are the clear favorites to win, although there are a lot of tough teams in this tournament, as we know. An experienced team led by two outstanding seniors in Scott Pollard and Jock Vaughn. Well, Scott Pollard, being 6'11", loves to run the court. He has completely recovered from his foot injury, Tim, that sat him out for eight games in the middle of the season. He's good at shot blocking. He has over 200 in his career and he's dynamite off each of the glass. Now, Jock Vaughn, he's back to form. He'll have fresh legs because he didn't play in the first 10 games of the season because of injury. Also, Jock Vaughn neutralizes all defenses. You can't trap Kansas, and he has good decisions when he dishes off. Brilliant All-American Jock Vaughn leading this backcourt, and they are strong right through the bench, Kansas. Now, for the uh, team from Jackson State, they've got an outstanding young player in Trent Pulliam. They say he can play every position, and he might have to, Al. If he played every position, they're still going to have a hard time. He's extremely quick. He can hit from out, hit from down. Good body action. He has an alive body. you got to like uh, Pulliam's numbers. Nearly 14 points a game, eight rebounds. Second team member on the all-swack team. Coach Andy Stoglin says his team is not afraid. They played a lot of top-ranked teams early in the season out of their conference. They didn't do very well, but he felt that if they won their tournament, they would have needed they would need that kind of experience against some of the top teams in the country. Joining Pulliam in the front court, Doug Williams, who averaged 11.2 the last seven games. Robert Fairley, a 6'10 center. Draper and Hall are in the backcourt. Roy Williams, in pursuit of his first ever national championship at Kansas in his ninth year, he feels he has the horses, but anything can happen. Last year, they were knocked out in the Elite Eight by Syracuse. Paul Pierce, Rafe LaFrench joined Pollard up front, the Big 12 Player of the Year, Rafe LaFrench. Jacques Vaughn is joined by Jared Haas in the backcourt for the Jayhawks. And today's game officials, Gene Manji, John Higgins, and Terry Moore. Well, Jackson State would like to think maybe they can be the first ever number 16 seed to win an NCAA tournament game. They came in with a record of 14 and 15, having had a 2 and 10 start against the likes of Arkansas, Memphis, Arizona, UCLA, Arizona State, and New Mexico. They had a slight chance, Tim, because they're a running team, and Kansas likes to play a running game. Kansas in white, the Tigers of Jackson State in blue and red. Hall in the backcourt, number five, Michael Hall, a junior from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. He'll control the backcourt play. The travel call on the steal attempt by Jock Vaughn, so the ball remains in the possession of Jackson State. Jock Vaughn doubled down on Hall when he penetrated to the baseline. Ricardo Draper. It's a client hitch for three, so the Tigers on the board first. That's a tremendous confidence builder. Junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. The third to start at the shooting guard position this season. They lost two others to injury. Dra Draper come over then and took a piece of the ball that time. They are from the Southwestern Athletic Conference with an enrollment of just under 8,000. An automatic bid into the tournament by winning the, the tournament championship 
in the SWAC, defeating Mississippi Valley State in the championship game. Doglin in his eighth year as coach at Jackson State with a record of 105 and 101. A little bit more patience for the Jayhawks, try to punch the ball inside. Call for Pulliam, Pulliam pull up. Off the back iron, rebounded by Pierce. The French with the feed, that's it will count. Picture book, fast break, three lanes going down. Watch the passing, this is Roy Williams teaching. Three lanes are full. Now the pass it off to the weak side. Finalize. Pass feeding LaFrance, and LaFrance will go to the lioness with a chance to make it a three-point play. And he does. We're tied at three in the early going here at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. Famous Kansas defense, smothering, tenacious, man to man, drifting off the weak side. Hall stepped on the sideline, so a turnover by the Tigers, their second. Pollard inbounding to Jock Vaughn. Jock just called the number three play, which should be kicked down to LaFrance down low. Nice touches. 5-3, Jayhawks. This is Pulliam from the free throw line. is short. He was bothered by LaFrance. Great LaFrance. 6-11 getting into his face. And LaFrance turns and hits. Big 12 player of the year at five points. Jayhawks likes a fast game, a running game. They average a little bit over 80 points a game. So it's right down there, Avenue. Rafe LaFrance had 16 against Missouri in the tournament championship game. Well, slow to get up is Vaughn, but he's all right. But that is Robert Fairley who hung on the rim there. I think he was afraid of coming down on top of Vaughn, seeing him on the floor. Well, Tim, you're allowed to uh, hang on the rim if there's a chance you might get injury. Watch Fairley goes baseline, and all of a sudden Jock goes over to help. Jock goes down. And he hangs so he won't fall down on Jock. No technical foul on that play. Pollard picked up the foul on Bailey. On Fairley, pardon me, uh, Robert Fairley. Now, this young man is their um, most improved player. He's a hustler. Doesn't have a great touch from outside about six feet. 6'10 junior from Louisville, Mississippi. Averaging nearly 10 points a game. 7-4, Jayhawks lead. Seventeen thirty-nine to go here in the first half. Opening game at the Pyramid in Memphis. Vaughn against Hall. Kicks to the corner. Look at the excellence facing by the Jayhawks. That's that means good coaching. Pierce is fouled inside, and it looks like it'll be Fairley picking up his first personal. You had to like. Um, Andy Stoglin, coach of Jackson State's attitude, he said, when you play the number one team in the nation, everyone knows it. My relatives who lost me now know where I am. I just hope I don't owe them any money. <laughs> you know, it's surprising when you think one coach here has only been at two schools, North Carolina and uh, the Jayhawks, and the, the other coach, he's been to, I think, four high schools, eight colleges, and two foreign countries. Coached pro ball in Qatar over in the Middle East, Persian Gulf. Former assistant under Nolan Richardson at Tulsa and at Arkansas. Should feel at home then playing in the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no sand around here right now. It's water they're worried about. The Mississippi is rising. Second personal on Fairley sends Pollard to the line. Fourth team foul on Jackson State. Into the game for Jackson State comes Jermaine Harden, number 30, a senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Going to school in his hometown. Fairley goes to the bench. Followed with a miss on his first try. Shooting two. Just took a shot, a practice shot after it. 
nice extension on his foul shot caught the front of the rim last time shoots seven and three percent from there but misses them both he over adjusted he caught the back of the rim in the second shot pulling him quickly down court for the tigers outside for hall Hall and draper the backcourt ricardo draper uh, taking over from marino walker gone for the year with a knee injury draper who had started eight games early in the season reclaimed the starting spot with the injury Missed by Draper with the side of the backboard. A steal back, and it's knocked out of bounds. It'll be Jackson State ball. Pass knocked it out of bounds. Good effort by the Tigers here. Watch the quick hands on Doug Williams here from the Tigers. There's a quick hands right there. Been an automatic putback, but didn't get it that time. And Half picked up the personal on the play. His first. This is Hall. Hall in the lane, he misses, Pollard comes away with it. Paul tried an MJ and Michael Jordan. Vaughn back outside for Haas. Pollard, short jumper off the back iron and rebounded by the Tigers, brought down by Jermaine Hart. Boy, they pushed the ball immediately. It takes them about four seconds to get down court. Harden's turnaround won't go, and LaFrentz has it. Difference is that Jackson State Tigers get no second shots. Vaughn trying to sneak in for the layup. Missed it. Rebounded by Harden. Harden, good size. 6'9", senior from Jackson. This is Pulliam. Pulliam with two big men to swat it away. Pollard got a hand on it. And Draper hits for three. Ricardo Draper. That's his second three. They got to play up tighter on him. We're tied at seven, six points for Draper. The French forcing it up and drew the foul. Jayhawks are missing a lot of easy shots. That happens when you're trying to knock a team out early, Tim. When you got a team you know you're better than, they're 40, 50 points better than this club. You try to knock them out the first five minutes and by trying to go so fast that you miss the easy shots. They missed about three or four easy shots already. Harden picks up his first personal. B.J. Williams checks in for Kansas, number 22. And number 32, Terry Bradley, you saw come in for Jackson State. Six-foot sophomore from Loosefield, Mississippi. The French at the line. Won't go for him. Jayhawks a little cold at the free throw line. The French shoots 76% and should make the second one automatically. Well, that percentage. Pollard, a good percentage shooter, too, missed his first two attempts. He gets one of two, LaFrance. A one-point lead for the Jayhawks. 15.30 to go from the Pyramid in Memphis, Kansas, by one. The deep one. That's his 13th three of the season. Goodrich at 6'8", 31% three-point field goal shooter. All five starters have scored in this game for Princeton, and the Tigers lead by five. They should be able to get something baseline. And a little quick duck in behind. Side clock running out. Magruder. It rattled out to Goodrich. And Bill Carmody doesn't even have to look over. Mitch, slow it down. Let's make him work the defense. <laughs> How pretty. Screen cut. Everybody unselfish. It is pretty to watch, but not to play against. And Mitch Henderson to finish. This is the largest lead for the Tigers. Seven points, and Ben Braun has asked for a 20-second timeout. How do you like your poison, my friend? Uh, it's just disturbing to have to play. And the back cut sets it up, but it's the attention to detail, the little brush, the recognition by the passer, and you mentioned the Earls. Danny with the bad back will be back next year ready to play. Joe Kessler, their coach at Shawnee, does a great job. You can see the vision and the knowledge that Brian Earl has. No surprise that Princeton's shooting a high percentage. They came into this game at exactly 50% for the season. 610 field goals and 1,220 attempts. 
And Bill, still not a substitute for Princeton. They played nearly 11 minutes with the five starters having gone all the way. I don't think, uh, not to say they don't expend energy, but it's a relaxed offense, relaxed defense. They get a chance to rest. And they're still running a little box and one on Duck. And it's and effective. Pass intercepted. Stewart, who just came back into the game with two fouls with the ill-advised pass. Princeton has hit its last five shots. They'll spread the half court. Always looking to score, but not in a hurry. Very intelligent approach, pass, cut, occasionally use the dribble penetration. Look at how you have to help and it frees the open one. Long three by Luellis wouldn't go at the shot clock at seven. You can get a little bit dizzy as you watch them go through their cuts. <laughs> look at this, half court. And you can't make mistakes like that, Sean. Pass went right through the legs of Stewart. Timeout in Winston-Salem. Joyce back in Winston-Salem. Despite all of Bill Carmody's success this season, a lot of folks still miss the sideline antics of former Princeton coach Pete Carrill. He's now an assistant with the Sacramento Kings. I spoke to him last night on the phone. He said he thinks Princeton's going to win this game. He'll be watching from his office, sitting down calmly, he claims. Even though Carmody and Carrill spoke often throughout the season, there was no contact this week. Why? Well, in perfect Pete Carrill style, he told me, I'm superstitious. I can't call. I don't want to put the whammy on those guys. Sean. <laughs> uh, great relationship. And Peter, Hall of Fame bound. Everybody's so excited for him. An institution in college basketball. On his way to the Hall of Fame, deservedly so. And Bill Carmody with the best start for the first year record by a Division I head coach since 1979 when Bill Hodges went 33 and 1 with Larry Bird's team. Count the bucket. James Mastaglio just off the bench. For Princeton into the ball game. Well, no Larry Bird on Princeton to get that record, but they have guys with the head of Larry Bird for basketball. Extraordinary ability to set their man up. You sneak a peek, back cut, they bang you with a good quick pass. And Sidney Johnson the bucket. He was fouled by McQueen, his first. Johnson, the first three-time captain in Princeton basketball history. He missed the free throw and Alfred Grigsby rebounded. The Cal Bears on their heels here in the first half. Down by nine with 7.40 remaining as Princeton's on a 7-0 run and they get it back. Nice play by Goodrich. The 2-3 has them frustrated. They can't pound the jumper. That's the difficulty. Trying to jam it inside with very little result. Six turnovers committed by the Golden Bears. And Princeton has only handed it over once. Princeton plays like all the guys at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. You know, you give it up, you unselfish, or you don't play the next day. Always looking over the shoulder. They need a shot. And they get it as it expired. No rim drawn there for a shot clock violation before the putback. But they got half of what they wanted. Use the clock. 7.02 remaining in the first half. You're watching the NCAA tournament on CBS Sports. In the first half, a lot of expectations on Cincinnati this year, early in the sp season especially. Well, they've certainly had their speed bumps over the last three weeks, but they're still a very dangerous team, and they tend to play better when their backs are against the wall. Butler a 14 seed, Cincinnati a 3 seed in the Midwest. Auburn Hills, Michigan. Now, let's go out to the southeast. They're in a timeout at the Pyramid in Memphis. But the story here is that Jackson State, a 16th seed against the number one seed, Kansas, and uh, expected to win it all by a lot of people. Tied at 15, Kansas looking a little lethargic out there. Well, sometimes the expectations of being the dominant team, the favorite to win it all, can be like two or three extra bags on a road trip, okay. weigh you down a little bit. And Jackson State, on the other hand, playing very, very loose right now. And at what point do we hear ring-a-ling-a-ling -a -ling, that alarm clock going off. It won't game. be long. Kansas has what I call, Pat, great spurt ability. The ability to put together great runs because they're strong defensively and they can turn you over and turn those points, turnovers into points. It's like Liberty all over again in Memphis in 94. Remember Liberty hung in there for 30 played eight against minutes. Carolina. Kansas is um, known for their ability to put together these spurts. I'm trying to give those Jackson State fans <laughs> something to cheer for. Well, you did. You did. 16 seed has never won. We'll keep you up to date on that one. Let's go back to Princeton, California. 24-17. Sean. Montgomery fouling Pollard. Pollard missed his first two free throw attempts. 
earlier in this first half. Look at those chops. Well, he's in Elvis Presley land anyway. Yeah, they asked him if he was gonna go visit. He said, no, my fiance, Mindy Campwell, but he said, I was never much of an Elvis fan. And he misses another one. Three in a row missed by Pollard. He was too young for Elvis. Oh, now this is the all Pollard team. Kansas fans are used to seeing him with a number of looks. <laughs> And he can give you five looks and form his own unit. I think he looks like Matt Dillard in that, uh, Matt Dillon in that uh, first shot up in the left-hand corner there. Things have changed for Pollard. He's a little taller than Matt. Well, he Dillard. keeps the team loose. Every team has a comedian. He's the comedian <laughs> that plays hard and plays quite well. And Pollard comes up with a loose ball as it's knocked away from Moten. Back comes Kansas. Thomas. That should be the start of the end. Let's see what happens. Billy Thomas puts him up by four. He shoots from three at 42%, so he's always dangerous out there. Fidel Woods also in the lineup. Stoglin going deep in his bench here in the early going. That is blocked by Vaughn with a great leap, stopping the shot from Michael Hall. Vaughn feeding the corner, and Thomas short this time. Pollard keeps it alive. Nice tap pass by Pollard that time to Vaughn. Pass inside for Pollard and reaching over was Montgomery, or make it Woods, Fidel Woods. His first personal, the sophomore from Natchez, Mississippi. Woods, you cannot play in back of Pollard. You have to either play one side or the other side. He's too much in back room. Kansas shooting in a one-on-one -on -one now. 18 foul for Jackson State and Stoglin. Takes out three, sends in three fresh sets of legs for the Tigers of Jackson State. Four points now for Pollard and a five-point Kansas lead. No interest in where Robinson coming in for jockey. Robinson should be a star in the postseason tournament, the NCAA tournament, because of having those 11 games early in the year and learned how to run the show while Jock was healing. Michael Hall gets a rest. Ricardo Draper, Draper returns for Jackson State. Williams down in the corner. Sorrell Valentine, double zero in the lineup for the Tigers. Pass for LaFrance and LaFrance. Followed by Pollard. Um, that was offensive interference. Yeah. The coach is right. Yeah, they wanted basket interference. Didn't get it. The ball was still inside the cylinder when Pollard uh, put his hand on it. I don't think Pollard ever actually got his hand on it, but he certainly hit the rim enough to knock it in. And there's a three-pointer from Pulliam. Now first points. That should get him going. He was on the drought. I think he was a little bit afraid of Kansas. Just couldn't get into his game. 22 to 18. Jayhawks by four. LaFrance. Little spin move, won't drop for him. Yeah. Pierce cleared, uh, cleared out with his inside arm, his left arm. He pushed underneath. Good call by the Zebras. Paul Pierce of Kansas picks up his first 15 foul against the Jayhawks. 9.52 to go, four-point margin. Kansas on top. Valentine and Pulliam in the backcourt now for Jackson State. Andy Stoglin has used virtually everybody in his lineup here in this first half. Defensively, Kansas overplaying man-to-man. -man. A little bit vulnerable in the back door. Pulliam. Told Pulliam hits for three. Once, wow. once he get out of the gate, Tim, a score like that, a score is a score. He was on the snide, and once they let him go, he's going to be a problem from now on. Six points for Pulliam. Interception on the long pass. Valentine trying to keep it in, and it's knocked out, I believe, by the Jayhawks. Yeah, Haas made a dive for it, sacrificed his body, caught a piece of it. Valentine unable to handle that pass, so the Tigers get a bit of a break. One-point game, 9-12 to go, first half. This is Williams, number 24. Valentine who wears a sock on one leg and not on the other. Well, Pulliam, he has high socks. Ricardo Draper 
Jacksonville has now hit five out of six from three-point range, and now it's five out of seven as Draper well off the mark. Well, that was way past the NBA range. Nice drive. Robertson driving. Ryan Robertson, the sophomore from St. Charles, Missouri. That was a runner. He kept his eye on the basket. Followed through. 24-21, Kansas. And Williams, an air ball. Popped up to Pierce, and Pierce, a battle for it there with Draper, and they'll call Draper on the foul. His second personal. Here's where Robinson drives. Keeps his eye up, floats, hits a runner. Finger roll. Ninth team foul. Now inside here, here, this is earlier in the game where the foul was committed underneath. Good call. A little bit of an overreaction, looking for an Emmy. Twenty-second timeout called by Jackson State, their first take in this half. While you're rocking on the road to the Final Four, join us on the Super Highway with CBS Sports Online. You'll find breaking news, scores, highlights, and other great stuff at cbs.sportsline.com. Roy Williams, a little look of concern on his face. A three-point margin, his team in front. 8-19 to go first half. And number 16, Jackson State's Tigers, who came in under 500 with a 14 and 15 record, and giving the Jayhawks a battle so far. Pierce's first point of this half. He's coming off a dynamite game in the championship of the conference. He had 30 points. It was the MVP of the tournament. Gets a pair at a five-point lead, Kansas. A little bit more pressure, a little further up court now. Jackson State is spreading them out, trying to make it a one-on-one -on -one game. Pulliam picks up his second personal on the charge. Starting to undress, starting to get into the ball game. That's a big man. Played for the Harlem Globetrotters also. Yes, he did. Andy Stoglin. There's Matt Doherty. Got a quick pop of him there. He should have a head coaching job any place in the country. He's definitely a keeper. Played for Dean Smith. Under the eight-minute mark, we go first half. Gayhawks by five. This is Jock Vaughn, watched by Valentine. Pass into traffic. Good pass for Pierce. That was goaltending by Pulliam. Four points for Pierce, and Kansas widens it to seven-point lead. Timeout called 7.46 to go first half. jump on the information superhighway with CBS Sports Online. You'll find breaking news, scores, highlights, and other great stuff at cbs.sportsline.com. Duck in the traffic. And he was fouled and will shoot two. Boy, he initiated there. Good, aggressive move, and that's what Princeton didn't do on the other end. And Duck has stepped up his game without Ed Gray. It's Alice's help, but Randy's been making threes. A terrific game against Arizona, but right here you can see the forceful nature. The Sands hair look on the calves, by the way. Yes, he shaves his legs regularly. He's been doing that since high school. It's a superstition. And he was aerodynamic downstairs today. I thought that was just swimming, and it made you quicker. Apparently in basketball it does as well. The smooth legs of a duck. <laughs> well, he webbed his way into the lane and got two free throws. Sean Marks, Sean Marks returns for Cal. And Grigsby gets a rest. He's still bothered by some nagging injuries, but at this point in his career, this could be his last game. He's not going to let the finger injury, which is the latest problem. Keep him on the sideline. Pennzoil at the half upcoming with Pat and Clark. We'll get you up to date on all the tournament news. 
stories and highlights. There's a three ball for Brian Earl. Of course, Pat and Clark will give you live look ins at other action going on on this first day of the 1997 NCAA tournament. Special K and Pat look fresh, ready for the long run, and that jumper looked fresh for Princeton. Duck unlucky as it rattled out his three point try. Now McQueen. Gonzalez strong inside. Well, he is impressive. I mean, to be able to do this, not spending a whole lot of time and attention to detail, good cut, the turnaround, and delivery. They go 1-3-1 that shot. Duck on the baseline. He should get a corner jumper. And rebounding could be a problem. Diagonal look is another possibility. Shot clock 15. Now this is silly. Mark sticks his hand in like a dentist as Earl went by. No bill, but a lot of pain. Marks well away from the ball, commits his second. So Gonzalez, Stewart, and Marks all front court players for Cal with two fouls each. And it is a bonus situation. Dennis Magruder comes back into the game for the Bears, and Anwar McQueen takes the seat. Uh, Sean, I know you get upset at certain things, if the order rarely. isn't on time or if the presentation <laughs> isn't proper, but Ben Braun's playing, his team is playing good defense. They confused Princeton a little bit. They put a guy in the line with just a little, not a cheap shot, one of those, uh, I just want to let you know I'm around type of shots. And Earl's not the kind of guy he's got to do that to. Oh, oh, oh. Earl missed the front end of the one and one. Shot clock is at 28. We can take it down almost to the final buzzer of the first half. 23 points to this point in the half for Cal. Their lowest point total of the first half this season prior to today, 25 against Arizona State. And Sean, I would shoot this soon enough that you get offensive rebound. Generally, you don't want to give the other team a chance at all. They go man-to-man -man right now, Princeton. Pull the string. Magruder, tough shot. It was an air ball. A chance for Duck. Shot clock expired. Good job, and though. There will be 1.7 on the game clock. The Princeton bench actually started to the locker room thinking that was the halftime buzzer, and it was instead the shot clock buzzer. And they have two attorneys on the bench, too. Not too many schools can say that. Joe Scott and Howard Levy. Uh, good play by Callow. Getting one up, getting another chance. I think Phil Carmody wanted a long try for a goal by Earl. He didn't even bother hoisting one. The end of the first half, the score, Princeton 29, California 23. Pat O'Brien and Clark Kellogg will be along from New York with Pennzoil at the half after this message and a word from your local station. The NCAA Tournament 1997 style, three games going on in North Carolina, in Tennessee, and in Michigan. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, the first motor oil to fully meet the new tougher GF2 standard. Hi, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with Clark Kellogg. Welcome to the first of 63 halftimes here <laughs> on CBS. Take a deep breath. Uh, Princeton leads Cal 29 to 23. Does this surprise you? Mildly, Pat, simply because I thought Cal would be able to utilize their size to more advance advantage. Princeton playing well on the glass, plus they're shooting a lot better than Cal in the first half. Cal missing Ed Gray very much at this point. 29-23 at halftime right now. Other game going on right now. Number one seed Kansas against Jackson State. It's 32 to 21 right now in the first half. 5.52 left to go in that game. Let's go courtside to Tim Ryan and Al McGuire in Memphis. 33 to 21, Kansas lead over Jackson State here in the first half. Inexorably, the number one team in the country has asserted itself. Pass for Pierce in the corner. His three is short. And it'll be Woods picking up the foul, going up for that rebound. For the first time in the game, they've showed a 2-3 zone the last time down, the Jayhawks. Let's see if they stay in it. Check it, it's LaFrance. LaFrance gets the foul. He and Woods went up together. 16 foul, first personal on Rafe LaFrance. Five twenty-seven to go in this first half. Jackson opened the scoring in the game with a three-pointer and kept it close until about the 
10-minute mark. Kansas, since then, has opened it up, 33 to 21. Hall, short jumper, good. Got a lot of help from a tough screen that time. Pierce trying to get through three defenders. Picked up the foul. Could have been any one of three, but it's Woods who gets it. His second in a row, Fidel Woods. Sending Pierce to the line. Big thing for the Tigers there is they're five for eight um, from three-point land. Indeed, and uh, Kansas shooting the ball well from the floor. None of the Tigers are in trouble because they've shotgun. They've played about 10 men already, so they shotgun their foul. Pierce gets one, and it is 34 to 23. With five minutes and four seconds remaining here in this first half. Kansas taking charge here as we go under the five-minute mark. Three-point try by McKinney missing. Kansas rebounding. They dominated on the board. Thomas for three. Back outside, Jock Bond. Jock resets, runs the show. He's the coach on the floor. Nice curl turn, turn by Thomas then. Five points for him. This is why they're number one. There's no weak spot on their team. They've become more physical this year than last year. If they stay mentally tough, they're going to be difficult to beat. Number one ranked team in the country. Number one seed here in Memphis. Jock's mad at himself, but he doesn't think he committed a foul. He's also an academic All-American, along with uh, Jared Haas. Vaughn and Haas, both expected to be on the All-Academic team again this year. The French picks up the foul, and that sends Hall to the line. Michael Hall, a junior from Hattiesburg. Pulliam back into the lineup for Jackson State. Well, our next game here in Memphis will feature Purdue and Rhode Island, eight against nine. That should be a dandy. And then this evening, Maryland starts the action against College of Charleston. Then it's Arizona and South Alabama. Purdue, Rhode Island should be a, um, a white knuckle. backs his way in now into the paint driving this the layup and the Tigers come up with it Paul out for Pulliam Pulliam pulls up and nails it did that thing bounce around before it went in eight points for Trent Pulliam Steel Knight's interception Williams knocking it loose Houdini hands. That'll be short. An air ball from Pulliam. If, well, Pulliam, you said he had eight or nine points. He's put up three air balls and he drained the other shots that he's taken. And Williams picks up the foul underneath the Kansas basket. Doug Williams, number 24. Stockland didn't like that call. Andy Stoglin, we mentioned their coach pro ball in Qatar and did play for the Harlem Globetrotters, has had a checkered career. An assistant under Nolan Richardson at Tulsa in Arkansas. And you gotta like his thinking about playing such a tough schedule. They went 2-10 this season, 2-10 to start the year because they played the likes of Arkansas and Memphis and Arizona and UCLA and Arizona State, New Mexico. And, but they finished well, 9-1. Ryan has two shots here because they're in the bonus. That means that the Tigers have committed to a 10 point. All right, and so uh, the Southeast region, region, by the way, 29-23, Princeton leads Cal. In the Southeast region, and the other game going on right now, Kansas leads Jackson State 38-26. Uh, uh, in the Midwest, in the first round, Butler and Cincinnati, 
32-15 is the score out at Auburn Hills. And Bob Huggins and his Bearcats, a lot of expectations early on them. Danny Fortson inside, big power game. For Real them. strong inside. He's doing work, as are his teammates, dominating the paint area. Butler shot well for a while. T.J. Perry off the bench goes inside for those two. Barry Collier looks on. But the Bearcats, uh, I think, maybe too strong for Butler. Inside and out, Darnell Burton knocking down the triple. That's his specialty. All right, thank you for watching Penzel at the Half for all of us here at CBS Sports, including Clark Kellogg, the first of 63 halftimes here on CBS. We hope you're here for all of them. Pennzoil at the Half was sponsored by Pennzoil, the first motor oil to fully meet the new tougher GF2 standard. We're at the Pyramid in Memphis. Jackson State's Tigers uh, hung tough until about the midway part of this first half. Coming up at halftime on Pennzoil at the half, Pat O'Brien and Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores and highlights, plus a live look at all the action going on around the NCAA tournament, all coming up at Pennzoil uh, at the half. And we are in Memphis with 3.22 to go. Kansas has opened the lead 39-26. to 26. Went to a 2-3 zone, tried to force them to shoot from the outside and keep the ball away from Pilliam. This is Hall, his pull-up. Won't go for him. Good follow. Good job. Yeah, that is Jermaine Harden, number 30, the senior from Jackson. Kansas has dominated on the board. 20 rebounds to 9 so far here in the first half. Let's see if they stay in the zone again. No, they're going man-to-man -man this time down, showing another face each time down. It's up to the Tigers to analyze the defense first, then go to action. All for Pulliam, and Pulliam won't go for him. They're 0 for 7 in their last seven tries from three-point range. Ryan Robertson inside LaFrance. Pulled down by Harden. That will be a one-on-one -on -one down the other end. I think that's the eighth foul committed by the Jayhawks. And Pierce picks it up. Eighth team foul is correct. One-on-one -on -one for Harden. Pulliam, Harden. Tyrone Moten. Michael Hall. And Williams. They line up for Jackson State. Pierce goes out for Kansas. Roy wants to go in. Roy Williams wants to go in at halftime, release a double-digit lead. Pass Pollard, Robertson, Vaughn, and LaFrance for the Jayhawks. They'll put the two big guys down in the blocks now and punch it into them. And a foul away from the ball on Pollard. On Pollard. Scott Pollard, we were saying earlier, uh, the reporter asked him if he was going to go over to Graceland, and he said, I wasn't much of an Elvis fan. He said, uh, since I'm a <laughs> social studies major, if, if I went there, it would be for historical purposes only. <laughs> they say today he has the, um, his nails are blue. They are, they're blue. They look green in the, on the TV monitor here, but they're a blue. Jayhawk blue, no doubt. Or maybe he's thinking of St. Patrick's Day Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Possible. He does change the colors. Changes a lot of things. Keeps himself interesting. Well, he keeps the team loose. Michael Hall, five points for him. Break it down from 13 to nine. That will allow something for Roy to jump on at halftime. Ryan Robertson, lots of room for three and nails it. Smooth shoots those at 39%. And he's got seven points. Pulliam controlling. Wow. Pulliam with a fancy move, but missed the shot. He cuffed the ball, which is illegal. Vaughn. Ball batted sky high here and a foul call. Uh, you know the Kansas fans out there, you got to understand the, the neutral fans always root for the underdog, so they're not picking on Kansas. Here, here comes uh, Jock Vaughn in, gives a nice disco fake there got fouled big time. Tyrone Moten over the top, number 22. His second. 
12 point Kansas lead with Vaughn at the line. Back in for the Tigers comes Terry Bradley. Six foot sophomore from Looseville, Mississippi. Jock Vaughn shoots over 80%. That's his first point. It doesn't bother him if he scores or doesn't score. The only thing he's interested in is winning and getting the ring. Winning and poetry. Poetry. Yeah. Yeah.